Well, meanwhile, officials are increasing security for Sunday's election in the wake of Thursday's deadly attack. French President Francois Hollande says an extra 50,000 police will be on hand to secure some 67,000 polling stations across the country. At the same time, large crowds of people have taken to the streets of Paris Saturday to rally in support of the French police. The angry police wives march paid tribute to the officer gunned down in the terror attack. For more on the investigation and the election, CBS News correspondent Elaine Cobb joins me now from Paris. Elaine, you can actually see the memorial for the victims is growing behind you. What can you tell us about the officer and how he's being remembered? With Xavier Jugel was 37 years old. He was driving that police bus just here on Thursday night when um, Karim Sherfi drove around the corner, around the front of the bus, got out and fired at him at point blank range with a Kalashnikov. Now, Jugel had just celebrated the end of his time with his unit of the police because he was about to change service to join the judici judicial police. And he was well liked. His colleagues have been remembering him um, all over the past few days. He also was one of the officers sent to the Bataclan in November 2015 when that hostage taking was underway. He was outside. A year later, he felt he had to go back for that reopening for the Sting concert. And he told journalists then, I'm here to show that they can't win, that we're saying no to terrorism. And today, people are still remembering him. There are flowers here and French flags in, uh, and messages offering support to his family and to his colleagues and also saying France is with the police, that we are supporting them in their efforts to keep us safe. You can really see the outpouring of support there in that video. They've named a suspect and ISIS has claimed responsibility. Is there a link to ISIS and what do we know about where the investigation is going? It's hard to know if that is a real link at this stage. When ISIS first claimed it, it they jumped on it in, with amazing rapidity. They're not usually that quick. And they named a Belgian um, ISIS member and it was not him. So. It's unclear yet. Now, police did find a handwritten note they believe fell out of his pocket that pledged allegiance to ISIS. And they found other notes in the car with other police addresses. But he was known as someone who attacked the police. He has been in jail for that. He tried to kill two police officers and, and was sent to jail in 2005. He threatened another police officer just this uh, January past and was detained by police for a few days. But they found no links to radical Islam at any point during his 14 years in prison or in recent times. So we're still not clear. And we know tomorrow are the presidential elections will are expected to be conducted. Any indication about how this terror attack is affecting voters and what they plan to do at the polls? I was speaking earlier to some Emmanuel Macron voters, they're centrists, and they said, look, this isn't changing anything for us. And it's unlikely it will change um, the vote for anyone who was planning on voting Macron or left wing. Um, it may bring out a few more of the undecided in favor of the right wing candidates. Marine Le Pen and François Fillon, the conservative former prime minister, have both been uh, making strong statements about the need to tighten controls, to deport foreign born um, radical Muslims. So that might help them. But there are still 30 percent of the population undecided during the final polls conducted before the shooting. And some of them may change their minds, but a lot of people I was speaking to said, you know, we just don't really know who we're voting for, so we just might not. Mm, wow, that's sort of the worst case scenario, hearing people stay back. I want to ask you, a lot of people are saying that this election in France is being compared to the 2016 election here in the U.S. Is that a fair assessment? Well, yes and no. There's the same wave of discontent and populism, um, the, the middle classes here as well have felt their spending power eroded. Unemployment is still 10% and has been for some time now. It's the highest unemployment rate in Western Europe. And a lot of people here feel that's just not acceptable. But it's, it's a different kind of race. 
What's happening here and why it's so uncertain at this stage is that we have a wide spread of candidates and more of them have been coming forward. Usually it's a straight right-left battle. This time there's, they run the gamut of far right to far left and the top four in the final polls are a far right, Marine Le Pen, far left, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, um, the centrist Emmanuel Macron and the conservative uh, François Fillon. So it's quite a spread and the socialists are those who are not in the race anymore and that is very unusual. They usually make it to the second round for well, a face-off but now, you know, this was already hard enough to call before the shooting and it's still really too close to call. We look forward to your reports tomorrow on Election Day Sunday. Elaine Cobb in Paris. Thank you, Elaine.